hope it's a long post. Our chaplain is a well-known pastor within our community, a graduate of the Oral Roberts University, a former, a former youth pastor, and the senior pastor now of Bahamas Faith Ministries International, Pastor David Burroughs. Morning. Morning. Honorable Prime Minister, leader of the opposition, parliamentarian, honorable speaker of the House. My pleasure to have this opportunity to offer some words of encouragement, inspiration, and uplift with you. I want to share for a few moments on the subject of the power of hope. There's a scripture in the Bible that's in 11 that says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And as I was reflecting on that scripture, it reminded me of an incident that happened a couple years ago where a friend of mine called me. And he said, Dave, I want you to turn on the TV. So I turn on the TV. And on the screen, and he was a motivational speaker. And he was earning substantial income as a motivator. So my friend said to me, he said, do you see what I see? I said, yes, yes, yes. Uh, excuse. He said, this guy taken what was given to him and used it. What are we doing? So I went back and I did some research on the young man. His name was Nick. Yeah. I found out that he had this condition and as a result of him being handicapped, he was ridiculed and scorned to the point where at the age of 10, he decided to suicide. And so here it was, this young man who was bullied, who was scorned, who was considered incapacitated, how did he get from the position of being suicidal to becoming a world-renowned motivational speaker? And I realized it amounted to one thing, and that is somewhere along the way, someone offered him hope, and hope has power. The interesting thing about this young man is that his, ex, his external environment never changed. He, was still, he still had the same condition that he had before. So what changed? Well, what changed was his internal environment. And that's where our hope comes from. In our country today, we are facing a major challenge. Sometimes when I listen to the talk shows, when I hear people speak, people say things like, the Bahamas is finished, we will never recover, and so on. And I realize that if we allow thoughts like that to persist, we could end up in hopelessness. And hopelessness produces despair. And despair causes in action. So I want to encourage all the members here today to remember whatever we do, that's awful hope. Jesus made a statement in the book of Mark. He said, all things are possible if you believe. The greatest problem is when you stop believing. And when you lose hope, there's nothing to believe in. So today I want to encourage you to make sure 
that you keep your hope alive, you keep believing. We believe that better days are coming. And I believe the best is yet to come. It doesn't look like that right now. But nothing has left the planet. We are all here. All the resources are here. We just have to figure out a way to get it distributed properly again. So I encourage you today to make sure. Someone said to me, they said, uh, How are you doing? I said, I'm TGH. So they ask me, they say, what is TGH? I say, every day, I am thankful, grateful. I am thankful that my name is not on the COVID dashboard. I'm grateful that I have the opportunity to help others who are losing hope. And I am hopeful that tomorrow is going to be better. So with these words, I want to remind you of the power of hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's repeat the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Find the kingdom, power and the glory, ever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Ben Simonet, Desmond Bannister, Renwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Dwayne Sands, Marvin James, Frankie Campbell, Michio Diagula, Michael Pintard, Darren Henfield, Jamal Ferreira, Felicia Rowe, Renville Rowe, Ellsworth Johnson, Philip Davis, Vaughn Miller, Patricia Parker Edgecombe, Aaron Lewis, Carlton Bolag, James Albrecht, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Ronald Saunders, Frederick McElpine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Pope, Miriam Reckley Emanuel, Ruth Chipman, Ruben Ramming, Ricky Mackey, Shannon Don Codright, Janelle Ferguson, Lana Tana Martin, Kaiswell Forbes, Chester Cooper. Good morning again, honorable members. Honorable member, just a, a few matters before we proceed with the order of business. Uh, the first matter being we've lost one of our dear sons of the soil, a member or a member of parliament of the upper house. Members would be aware of the passing or of the upper house of parliament of a member who served with distinction in that other place. I'm talking about Senator the Honorable John Lee Ferguson. And I'm sure that members of this House of Assembly will wish to pay tribute to his life and legacy. But I believe it would be fitting to begin our proceedings today by honoring his service to the high office he held by standing for a moment of silence in prayerful reflection of the certainty of death. Thank you very much, honorable members. Honorable members, the, we are also saddened, the Parliament of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas was recently saddened 
by the passing of one of our beloved former chaplains. Members would be aware that a time on a tradition and rule of this Honorable House is the selection by the Speaker of a chaplain to offer prayers at the beginning of every sitting of the House of Assembly. Following a line of distinguished clerical tradition, Pastor Hugh Roach was chosen by my predecessor immediately after the 2012 general elections to render such a service to this honorable house. Pastor Roach was a very well-seasoned religious leader, having served the Bahamas Conference of Seventh-day Adventists for many decades. His accomplishments are too numerous to mention at this moment, but suffice it to say that his experience permitted him to embark upon his responsibilities as chaplain with such a ease and grace one would have thought that he had been performing this service for many, many years. No one would have thought when they saw him for the first time that that was his first day. I also, I'm also in possession of a, uh, a tribute to the former chaplain from my predecessor, Dr. Kendall, major speaker of this house, who had the opportunity to appoint Pastor Roach as chaplain. And uh, in the interest of time, I'll just read uh, one paragraph of his uh, tribute from Dr. Major. During his tenure as chaplain, he was always present and engaged even when there was no house sitting. He would often stop by the House of Assembly to cheer up the staff. Whether there were births, deaths, celebrations, or disappointments, Pastor Roach was always there, encouraging us to be the kind, to be kind to ourselves, to treat others with respect and to serve our God sacrificially. His presence always added a sense of peace and wholeness. We will surely miss him. The Bahamas has lost a fine son. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory. I now table uh, both my remarks and the tribute to the late Pastor Hugh Roach, former chaplain of this Honorable House of Assembly. that the documents to lie on the table. And the final piece of housekeeping before we move, I wish to bring it bring to the attention of honorable members that I'm in possession of a letter dated the 1st of September 2020 from the secretary to the governor general, most excellency, honorable Cornelius A. Smith. The letter, the letter reads, Dear Mr. Speaker, I am directed to acknowledge receipt of your letter of the 24th of July, 2020, reference nominees for composition of the Constituencies Commission. Further, I wish to advise that His Excellency, the Most Honorable Cornelius A. Smith, offers no objection to prospective members of the Commission. Committee members will receive their letters and they shut up by this time, by the 4th of September, 2020. And the committee members are as follows. Constitutionally appointed Chairman, the Honorable D. Halson Moultrie, Speaker of the House of Assembly and Member of Parliament for Nassau Village. The Deputy Chairman, also constitutionally appointed uh, on the recommendation 
of the Honorable Chief Justice is the Honorable Madam Justice Deborah Frazier, Justice of the Supreme Court. The other members include the recommendation by the Honorable Prime Minister Hubert Alexander, Minister, Member of Parliament for Kalani. Uh, member, the Honorable Renwood Wells, Member of Parliament for Bamboo Town Constituency, and the Honorable Michael Pintard, Member of Parliament for Marco City Constituency. And on the, based on the nominee and recommendation of the Leader of the Official Opposition, the Honorable I. Chester Cooper, Member of Parliament for the Exumas and Ragged Island constituency. This now puts the constituency's commission in a position to begin its work. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The, the, the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. The speaker, before I start, so that the members of the press do not carry the wrong information, I note that you mentioned what the House being dissolved. There's no dissolution or dissolving of Parliament. <laughs> <laughs> so get that straight. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Order 2020. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the copy of the following Emergency Powers COVID 19 Pandemic Number 2, Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Amendment Number 2, Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents Thank by you, ministers. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table of the House a copy of the following the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Number 3. Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by Minister. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Number 3 Amendment Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by Thank ministers. You, Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the copy of the following. Emergency Powers COVID-19 Pandemic Number 3 Amendment Number 2 Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number three, amendment number three, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up.
important that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on table for us the corporate the following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number three, amendment number four, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, thank you Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on table for us the corporate the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number three, amendment number five, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to on the table of the House of Public Forum. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic number three, amendment number six, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to on the table for us a copy of the following emergency powers COVID 19 pandemic number four, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to on Table of the House, a copy of following emergency powers, COVID-19, pandemic number five, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave on the table of the House, a copy of the following emergency powers, COVID-19, pandemic number five, amendment order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of the House of the following. Emergency powers, COVID-19, pandemic number five, amendment number two, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table for the copy of the following. Emergency powers, COVID-19 pandemic, Grand Bahama lockdown, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table for us a copy of the following the emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic Grand Bahama lockdown amendment order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. <clears throat> order that the document will lie on the table for the laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table for us a copy of the following. Emergency powers, COVID-19, pandemic, Grand Bama, lockdown, amendment number two, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to on the table to house a copy of following. Emergency powers, COVID-19, pandemic, speeches, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order laying of documents by ministers. Order that the document do lie on the table. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table for the copy of the following. Emergency powers, COVID-19 pandemic, speeches number two, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave to lay on the table of emergency powers, 
COVID-19 pandemic weekend lockdown order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table copy of the following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic lockdown amendment order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave on the table copy following the emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic lockdown amendment number two, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave on the table house copy following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic lockdown amendment number three, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document to lie on the table. <laughs> Further laying of documents by ministers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> I beg leave lay on the table. That was the copy of the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic lockdown amendment number four. Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table of House of Copy following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic lockdown amendment number five, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the table to also copy the following emergency powers, COVID-19 pandemic special provisions, order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the table to also copy the following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic special provisions amendment number 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the table to also copy the following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic Tropical Storm Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the table house copy the following. Emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic. Tropical Storm Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the House to copy the following emergency powers COVID 19 pandemic tropical storm amendment order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave the table of copy following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic tropical storm amendment order 2020. Order that the document brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table for the laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave on the table house copy the following emergency powers COVID-19 pandemic extension of 
Section 17.1 of the Local Government Act, Order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document will lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I beg leave lay on the table of the House of Copies following the Emergency Powers COVID-19 Amendment Regulations 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, that's all. But um, Speaker Boy said I only want to um, remind the public there's been some misinformation. Breezes Hotel, which has been offered and assisting the Ministry of Health in establishing itself as a <coughs> hospital facility for what? Strictly non COVID patients. All patients at Breezes are non COVID. So the fake news and misinformation out there that Breezes, Breezes has COVID patients is thus impacting. It's, um, its future is not true. That's fake news. It's all non-COVID patients, Mr. Speaker. And um, I also want to remind the public that as of today, they can receive their COVID test at doctor's hospital at a markedly reduced rate that they receive some form of certification. And they can uh, present that at the airport in order to board their vehicle or board the plane. But they can receive the test from doctor's hospital at a marked reduced rate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Further laying of documents by Ministers, the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Central Bank $250 gold proof coin flamingo order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Chair, recognize the Honorable Member for East Grand Bahama. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Central Bank $100 gold proof coin conch shell order 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following. The Central Bank $10 silver proof coin in neutral pineapple order, 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Central Bank of the Bahamas Act, 2020. Appointed day notice, 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Banks and Trust Companies Regulation Act 2020. Appointed day notice 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Protection of Depositors Amendment Act 2020. Appointment day, day, appointed day notice 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House. The Bahamas Registered Stock Direction 2020. Bahamas Registered Stock Number 5. 2023, 2025, 2027, 2030, 2040, and 2050. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House the Bahamas Registered Stock Direction 2020, Bahamas Registered Stock Number 7, 2023, 2025, 2027, 2030, 2040, and 2050. Order that the documents be brought up. Order that documents do lie on the table. Further laying of documents by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Bamboo Town. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following, the Supreme Court COVID-19 number two rules 2020. 
ordered that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Puedo, laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following, the Supreme Court COVID-19, number three rules, 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Puedo, laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, I beg leave to lay on the table of the House a copy of the following, the magisterial sitting of court notice. 2020. Order that the document be brought up. Order that the document do lie on the table. Further laying of documents. Mr. Speaker, there are no further laying of documents. Thank you, Honorable Member. I take that to mean by any other minister. Thank you, sir. Uh, statements and communications by ministers. Uh, uh, honorable member, the, the chair recognize the member for Sandville. Are you on a point of order? Could you state the point? Yes, the point of order uh, is, uh, Mr. Speaker, this is the second Wednesday um, of the month which is uh, where questions time is referred and the agenda is different unless the House authorizes such. So I just would like to know which agenda are we on because I, I, I have myself have a lot of questions. Hon Honorable Member, um, you are rather late in your intervention. Um, we are already uh, moving along the order of business, which is the standard order of business and we are at item six on that order now so um. if you look at both agendas it's only up until that point that it, ch it changes because at that point uh, with the Wednesdays the second Wednesday the next thing on the agenda would have been communications by the clerk not statements from uh, not statements and communications by ministers. And so that is why I waited at that point to see if it were continuing on that, uh, that agenda versus the questions time agenda. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for Bamboo Town. Uh, Mr. Speaker, so that there is no misconfusion uh, in the House, I will move a motion that the House continues with its normal uh, agenda. And according to the rules of the House, not necessarily a unanimous vote and so I'm moving that the House now resumes its normal agenda rather than the agenda for the second Wednesday of the month. Yeah. Just, just a moment. A member, uh, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Mango P, South and Central Andros. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I think the honorable chair should be cognizant of the input, the inter intervention by the member for Centerville, and also say to the good leader of government, basis when you're powerful, also be merciful. Um, the good member noted the fact that there are a number of questions that are outstanding, and this is our Wednesday, and I know you can take the vote and you can have the majority would win. But I'm also noting the fact that if these concerns have been voiced once again here in this honorable place, that maybe we can get a definitive date from the good member for a leader of, of government business, pardon me, as to when we could find a time to discuss these said concerns as stated by the good member for Senator. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing the intervention. Thank you, honorable member. Honorable members, just so that 
we are clarified for the motion. The rule 39, one says, unless the House determines otherwise, or, or unless the House otherwise directs, the business of each sitting day shall be transacted in the following order. And that is the order that we are proceeding with. And basically the second order uh, to which the member for Senateville is referring to states basically the same clause, unless the House determines otherwise. So we have a motion on the floor of the House to give the House the opportunity to determine which order of business. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that this Honorable House pursue the, the regular order of business as laid out in Rule 39 of the Rules of Procedure of the House of Assembly. As many as are in favor will remain seated. Those who oppose will sign. The motion is carried. The House will proceed uh, according to the order of business as set out in Rule 39. Honourable, the chair recognizes the honourable member for Mango Key, South and Central Andros. I should be in good standing with you, Mr. Speaker. All I'm asking is so that you can get from the governing side and from the leader of government business an undertaking that he would commit himself to having a day that we could have for questions and in the very near future. And do not allow the member for Kalani to use the ultimate whip on him that he would not be able to once again respond as very shortly post haste in this most urgent matter, where we can have all of these questions that we have lingering here. We, 300, we have over 306, have more than 300 questions, 306 questions could be answered very shortly. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tell me about not to cause any arousal in this place. For Bamboo Town. Mr. Speaker, I would say to the Honorable Member for Mangrove Key, South, South Central Andros, that he has, he's a senior man in this place. He's been here for a long time. And he understands the procedures and how the rules of this house have been conducted over the course since independence. Uh, we will take his request under advisement and uh, the government will get back as to what it will do in regards to questions. As he rightfully knows, the previous administration has done and the administration after before that has done and the administration before that is done we will answer we will answer mr speaker in the manner the previous administrations in this house have said i i i am never so you you should you should know i'm a i'm a soda andrus man i am never intimidated the chair recognizes the honorable member for east grand bahama <laughs> I'm not the lead in the house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Speaker, I will always defend the rights of Bahamians. <laughs> always. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, today it is my pleasure to present an update on the fiscal and economic plan that the government is currently implementing. This is the resilient Bahamas plan outlined during the budget exercise in June to respond to the ongoing coronavirus COVID-19 pandemic. The report will include initial data and preliminary analysis on the first few months of the new fiscal year and a full report to the House of Assembly and the Bahamian people based on our end of year performance for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. My report this morning will be accompanied by a press conference this afternoon at 1.30 p.m. Note also that I will provide a comprehensive update at the end of October when we, rep we represent the first quarter budget performance report for the fiscal year 2020-2021. I want to remind the public that the Fiscal Responsibility Act 2018 requires the government to adhere to principles of accountability and transparency in its fiscal affairs. 
although not legally mandated, mandated to do so, since 2018, we instituted quarterly reporting to the Bahamian people on the government's fiscal affairs, in addition to, pre to presentation of the required annual fiscal strategy report every November. Because of this, there is little room to, to equivocate on matters of transparency. Report to the Bahamian people we should, we must, and we gladly do so. Mr. Speaker, speaking to the current fiscal realities, the Minister Administration presented a pragmatic budget in June 2020 that anticipated a year of economic hardship driven by significant shortfalls in government revenue, subdued economic activity, and high levels of unemployment because of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. Today, we are all living the realities of this public health emergency and experiencing the socioeconomic fallout foreshadowed in the budget. In response, the government continues to implement its fiscal and economic plan to manage the ongoing crisis, mitigate further economic fallout, stimulate economic consumption, and prepare for a reopening. The budget was predicated on a base case scenario which anticipated muted economic activity in tourism in the first quarter of the fiscal year, that being July to September of 2020. However, the, nece the necessary but protracted sh shutdown in August had a significant impact on the business community and has caused some deviation to our initial revenue forecast for that month. Further, a failure to jumpstart tourism before the end of the year would likely result in a more troublesome scenario. Fortunately, the Minister of Tourism, in his update on Monday, showed evidence of the significant pent-up demand for travel to the Bahamas, and we have reason to anticipate a successful winter season, provided that our efforts to, to safely reopen continue. There is no denying, however, that what happens in the global and domestic economy over the next few months will have a significant impact on the way forward and on the possible adjustments the government may have to contemplate. It is for this reason why I shall further, why, why I should provide a further update at the end of October to keep the public informed on the latest fiscal information we have at our disposal. Although partial and complete lockdowns and curfews are effective in flattening the curve of the pandemic and have been a necessary response in the interest of saving lives, early performance indicators for July and August clearly demonstrate their significant dampening effect on revenue receipts. For the first two months of the fiscal year, total revenue came in at approximately 77% of the budget projection for the related period, largely reflecting the slowdown in, econ in eco economic activity in August as a result of the lockdown. As for expenditure, since June, we have seen the expected ramp, ramp up in spending related to unemployment support, food assistance, and other forms of emergency relief in line with budget expectations. The first two months of the current fiscal year also show that expenditure was slightly higher than anticipated. As a country, we cannot readily afford more protracted lockdowns without significant and painful adjustments to the government's fiscal plan. We join all Bahamians in our, in our desire to see business fully reopened and commerce getting back to normal. But has been stated often, our ability to open fully and stay open will be dependent upon our collective efforts and discipline 
in following the established COVID-19 safety protocols. The Ministry of Finance is currently reassessing its projections to adjust possible outcomes and policy responses where necessary, even if it means having to make difficult decisions in the future. We will do whatever is necessary and possible within the boundaries of what we can afford. Mr. Speaker, turning to the fiscal outcomes for fiscal year 2019-20, what we, have, we are experiencing now is the fallout of two exogenous shocks that hit in fiscal year 2019-2020. As laid out in the government's fourth quarter fiscal report issued last week, fiscal outcomes for the 2019-20 fiscal year were predominantly driven by the unprecedented impacts of Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic. The government had tabled and passed a supplementary budget in January of this year, which revised the new estimated deficit upward to some $677.5 million, or 5.3% of GDP. The expected revenue loss and increased outlays for rebuilding and restoration necessitated such a fiscal adjustment. Still, the impact of yet another external shock, COVID-19, altered the revised estimate outcome and resulted in an estimated fiscal deficit of some $788.1 million, or 6.5% of GDP, for the 2019-2020 fiscal year. This was roughly in line with the $770 million projected for the year end at the time of the 2020-2021 budget communication. Mr. Speaker, during the last fiscal year, revenue performance weakened by $337.1 million to $2.1 billion comprising 87.2% of the revised budget. This happened against the backdrop of subdued economic activity in the final quarter of the fiscal year amid the shutdown of the economy. Expenditure grew by $231.7 million to $2.9 billion. Specifically, recurrent expenses increased by $86.3 million to $2.5 billion, featuring approximately $34.7 million in expenditure related to Hurricane Dorian and another $17.8 million to support the COVID-19 measures. A further breakdown of these expenditures include unemployment assistance, food assistance, and other assistance programs. Similarly, Capital outlays expanded by $145.3 million to $368.7 million, owing mostly to water and electri electricity restoration activities in Abaco and Grand Bahama, cleanup and other repairs in the aftermath of Hurricane Dorian, which to to totaled $94 million for the year. In addition, $39.5 million was spent towards COVID-19 initiatives, which mostly consisted of business continuity loans to small and medium businesses through the Small Business Development Center. Mr. Speaker, I now turn to the implementation of the government's fiscal and economic plan. So far, we are, we are enforcing the planned cut in non-essential expenditure allocations by 20% across all ministries so as to contain discretionary expenditure. As part of our economic mitigation strategy, however, we have maintained critical expenditures in priority areas such as public health, social support, public infrastructure, small business support, and employment retention, including the retention 
of public sector employment levels. Public health spending has accounted for the largest COVID-19 related outlays to date between last fiscal year and the current year. It remains a priority focus and a core part of our fiscal and economic strategy. The government allocated some $35.2 million in the current budget to the Ministry of Health to assist with the detection, treatment, and mitigation of COVID-19. Actual health-related COVID-19 expenditures as of June 30th include over $10.8 million, including funds to set up the, and manage quarantine facilities, expand existing health care facilities, purchase pr pr protective equipment, and other medical supplies, support the COVID-19 response in the family islands. Mr. Speaker, expanding social support continues to be a core part of our fiscal and economic plan. Hence, from the outset of the pandemic in the country, the government quickly executed an expanded unemployment assistance program to support self-employed persons who would not ordinarily qualify for the unemployment benefit under the National Insurance Board Benefits Scheme. This program ran from late March to June and was ex ex extended in the 2020-2021 budget to run into the first half of the new fiscal year. To date, 7,115 persons have benefited from this program, with a total of $15.4 million paid out and into the hands of Bahamians. The House would recall that the government also funded a special extension of the unemployment benefits for unemployed persons who had exhausted their standard NIB benefits. This program is continuing its 13-week time period. There are 28,478 persons who have benefited from this initiative with payments to date totaling $37.9 million. It is important to remind the House that these outlays are not standard NIB benefits, but instead represent a special and targeted program designed and financed by the government to help address the vast economic dislocation caused by the pandemic. For the information of the House, under the regular unemployment benefit scheme funded directly through NIB contributions, some 38,598 persons have applied to date. From its own resources, NIB has paid out some $93.3 million directly to those beneficiaries. Combined, these programs have supported approximately 43,200 persons and poured some $146.5 million into the domestic economy. As one senator would say, putting money on the ground. <laughs> Regarding food support, the government was allocating approximately $1 million per week to the National Food Distribution Task Force, which to date has assisted some 110,000 persons. Beginning last week, the government increased this allocation to $1.3 million per week, given the increased demand for support. Data from the Department of Social Services indicates that to date, Approximately $11.9 million has been disbursed through the task force to participating non-governmental organizations who have been working tirelessly to assist those in need. And Mr. Speaker, I pause to say thank you to all those who are volunteering to be a part of this massive undertaking. I say thank you to, as well to the thousands of Bahamians who are making donations 
regularly to support this effort. Mr. Speaker, employment retention continues to be a primary focus and a core component of our fiscal and economic plan. The government rolled out the tax credit and deferral employee retention program at the Department of Inland Revenue, which in the first phase allowed businesses with a turnover of $3 million or more to receive a mix of value-added tax and business license credits and deferrals for up to three months. In the second phase, which runs until October of 2020, the Department of Inland Revenue extended the application to all qualified VAT registrants, which means that once a company, a company has a turnover of $100,000 or more, it could apply to receive those credits and deferrals. We're not only looking after big companies, we're also looking after small and medium companies. To date, some 80 businesses were approved under this program and have received some $22.9 million in tax credits and deferrals. This has translated into saving some 9,004 jobs within the domestic economy. As companies are required to spend the amount granted in credits and deferrals on payroll expenses. Further, the government made the conscious decision as part of its commitment to, to employment retention to maintain the employment of civil servants and persons employed in state-owned enterprises up to this date. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, strengthening the domestic economy by supporting, supporting small business continues to be a priority focus and a core component of our fiscal and economic plan. In the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget, the government has allocated some $55 million to radically expand its support for Bahamian entrepreneurs and the small businesses. In large part, to assist them through this most challenging economic period. As of June 30th, the government dispersed $39 million to SBDC for its business continuity and other programs. Approximately 545 small businesses and entrepreneurs benefited directly from the SBDC's COVID-19 Business Continuity Initiative. That's excellent. That's excellent. I think that is, that is worth saying again. As of June 30th, okay. the government dis disbursed $39 million, disbursed, yes. mean paid, $39 million to, SBDC, to the SBDC for its business continuity and other programs. Approximately 545 small businesses and entrepreneurs, aka Bahamians, benefited directly from the Small Business Development Center's COVID-19 Business Continuity Initiative. Collectively, these businesses represented 4,304 jobs, which were protected because businesses were able to use the proceeds to support their operations and to help meet payroll. As an aside, Mr. Speaker, we know that there are many more who are in the pipeline and who are awaiting their funding. And say to them that we are in the process of dispersing another uh, $10 million to the SBDC very, very shortly, if not done already. And we will clear out, that will help to clear out the backlog of uh, programs or, or applicants that are in the system awaiting funding. Mr. Speaker, this, this program has been so inspirational to so many and has helped so many to get uh, into business, to be able to stay in business during this very difficult time. And it's inspiring that spirit of entrepreneurship that we have longed for in this country for so long. 
where, as one of our members would say, we can make the wealth more common because we have a diverse, a diverse <laughs> golden eyes. We have a diverse uh, uh, base of entrepreneurs rather than the wealth being concentrated in a minority. Mr. Speaker, speaking to the way forward, to meet these and other obligations, the Ministry of Finance is currently using the $1.3 billion borrowing authority approved by the Parliament under the fiscal year 2020-2021 budget. Under this authority, last month, we accessed $248 million as part of a $300 million bridge financing deal. We, we are also in the possession, or in the, sorry, in the process of concluding a $200 million transaction, and actually, actually I can say this morning that it's concluded, con concluded a $200 million transaction with the Inter-American Development Bank and a $40 million facility with the Caribbean Development Bank. Further, we are readying ourselves for a capital market transaction as soon as market conditions permit and have under consideration other transactions to ensure that we can cover our budgetary requirements for this fiscal year. I am pleased to advise the House that notwithstanding the country's formidable economic challenges, the domestic and international markets continue to have confidence in the Bahamas. Yeah, I think so. I am pleased to advise the House that notwithstanding the country's formidable economic challenges, the domestic and international markets continues to have confidence in the Bahamas. The success of the government in raising the necessary funds is a testament to this confidence. Even in this constrained environment, the government remains extremely vigilant in the management of its fiscal resources. The position of the public treasury is secure, Exuma and Ragged Island, and the viability of the Bahamian dollar and the exchange regime remains robust. We intend to continue our commitment to not raising taxes, The economy is still in a fragile position, and adding additional taxes to that is not going to help with the growth and expansion that we need or the stabil stabilization of the existing economic base. Of course, the government is contemplating economic growth strategies as a part of a long-term recovery plan, including diversification within the tourism sector and within the broader economy. Prime Minister, the member for Kalani, will speak to these areas when he reports on the rec recommendations of the Economic Recovery Committee. However, our immediate priority in the middle of the crisis is to remain true to the resilient Bahamas plan we articulated during the budget exercise. The plan to do as much as possible to support the public health care system and to provide tens of millions of dollars to support Bahamians displaced by COVID-19, as well as the Bahamian business community. Saving one saves a hundred. While this is happening, the government and the Economic Recovery Committee are shaping the plans and strategies for what is to happen as we emerge from this crisis. As the Prime Minister announced in his national address to the nation on August 24th, the Economic Recovery Committee has provided some interim recommendations ahead of its final report, which is expected to be submitted this month. These early recommendations include fast-tracking the approvals of all pending viable private sector and construction projects that are currently under consideration, which the government has already begun to facilitate. 
In addition, the government is looking for ways to provide special support for the creative community and further support for small businesses and entrepreneurs to ensure that they have the necessary resources to provide their goods and services. These initiatives help to provide jobs and increase economic activity, which is critical to, re to the reopening of the economy. Consistent with our plan, we're seeking external financing to cover our budgetary shortfalls and to support healthy external reserve levels. It is a strategy that is working, notwithstanding the fact that we are five months plus into the near full shutdown of our primary export sector, the international tourism market. Our reserves remain at a fairly healthy $2.1 billion, equal to 38 weeks of import cover and close to levels at the start of the pandemic. You need me to repeat that? Yeah, let me, let me, yeah. yeah. Consistent with our plan, we are seeking external financing to cover our budgetary shortfalls and to support healthy external reserves. It is a strategy that is working, notwithstanding the fact that we are five months plus into the near full shutdown of our primary export sector, the international tourism market, our reserves remain at a fairly healthy $2.1 billion, equal to 38 weeks of import cover and close to levels at the start of the pandemic. The position of the public treasury, as I said before, is secure. And the viability of the Bahamian dollar and the exchange regime remains robust and safe. It's called management. This government, Mr. Speaker, colleagues, Bahamians, has a plan. It is a plan that is working. And despite all the challenges, the viability of the Bahamian dollar and the exchange regime remains robust, as I said. Although the situation is fluid, we are confident that we have enough reserves to take us through the difficult time until we reopen the all-important tourism sector, which the Minister of Tourism, the member for Freetown, guarantees us. <laughs> and we will leave it open this, this time as long as we, all of us, Bahamians, all of us, do our part. You know, I listen. You're not supposed to do this, but <laughs> forgive me. You're not supposed to do this, but I listen to people uh, in business chat groups and and uh, some of these think tanks that knows all the answers to everything. Uh, and they 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 want they expect the government to do all things without taking any action, any punitive action. The reality is that we are all in this together, as the, as the Prime Minister, the member Carl Kalani would have said on so many occasions, the Minister of Health would have said on so many occasions. It takes all of us. If we want a robust, strong, stable economy, each and every one of us has to do our part. This is an inconvenience. I, I, I'm going to lie to you. This is an inconvenience. But it is a necessary inconvenience if we want to have a successful reopening 
of our economy. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I watch the young people congregate at bars and, and, and hang out spots, all up in each other's face. Yeah. No mask. <laughs> young and old, yeah, you're right, young and old. And, and, and they're not concerned. Yeah, somebody doing a quarantine. Man, listen. I, <laughs> you, you take that out of me. All about eating fish. Let me get back to my script before I get in problems. <laughs> All about eating fishy fish. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the bottom line for the way forward is that we need the domestic economy up and running. And we need to get the tourism sector moving again urgently and safely. Public anxiety about the economic crisis is real and it is valid. However, if lives are at stake, public health priorities must take precedent. If our cases continue to increase, that too will dampen consumer demand, participation in the economy, and curtail any visitor arrivals. No one wants to live in or travel to a COVID-19 hotspot, particularly one that is offshore with medical facilities that we all know, and the Minister of Health has said over and over, that are already taxed by local demand. Unfortunately, there is no magic wand to reconcile the public health and the economic welfare objectives amid a global pandemic. We must tackle and achieve success on both fronts by working together. This is not a job for the government alone. It is dependent on us and our collective behavior. Each one of us must do our part to reduce the transmission of this virus in order to safely restart the economy. In our homes, on our jobs, and on the road, each one of us must take this virus seriously and do our part to reduce transmission. If we can adhere to the health protocols and govern ourselves with discipline and accountability, we can and will safely reopen the economy. Our fiscal and e economic health and the livelihoods of thousands of Bahamians depends on you, depends on me, depends on all of us. Mr. Speaker, as I close, I just want to give a thank you. First, to observe that just past the one year anniversary of Hurricane Dorian, and we had the opportunity to have a bit of a memorial service where we're able to, rec to remember those 31 lives that were lost in East Grand Bahama during that terrible, terrible storm. Those who have deceased, I think it's 11 of them at this point, some 22 missing still. And we certainly remember those families as they find ways to continue to survive and to live with the realities of the loss of that fateful day. Many persons, Mr. Speaker, are still displaced. Many persons are still having difficulties with day-to-day -day challenges of life. Many are still suffering emotionally, mentally, 
as a result of the scarring from that day. And certainly we continue to offer our prayers and support to those families as they endure this season. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Ed Curling, the Tycoon Management, for his work, his team's work, and Mr. Andrew Gator and their teams for the work that they did over the weekend in helping us to clear the marina in McLean's town. I'm just taking the opportunity, uh, I don't want to have to stand up again, sorry. Uh, in McLean's town, um, from the vehicles that would have been uh, blown into the water as a result of that storm, uh, posing both navigational as well as health environmental risk. And so that, that was a, uh, a very good gesture on their part. They did that free of charge, and I do want to thank them uh, profoundly on behalf of the community. I'd also like to note and give condolences on the passing of our former chairman uh, of the Free National Movement, Mr. John Lee Ferguson, who, I'm, I'm try, I beg your indulgence, I'm trying to end it, to do it all at one time. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Let's try to be a little respectful. Uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, again, Mr. Ferguson, who is uh, someone that we all know very well, and certainly somebody who was very dear to me and to my family, as he would have reminded me, he was the town crier when I was born, going through the town uh, heralding the birth of the twins. And so uh, uh, certainly uh, we would remember him very fondly as family. Also, Dr. Philip Thompson, who would have passed um, um, a week or so ago, um, a well-known, noted surgeon uh, who has not only saved many, many lives, but has also been a mentor uh, to so many of our young physicians. And so certainly he would be missed in our, in our community. Likewise, Pastor uh, Dr. Hugh Roach, uh, who, as you indicated, such a gentle soul, such a wonderful mentor, uh, and he's such a calming presence uh, in this house. I think he would have saved many of us <laughs> many a day. <laughs> and so we certainly want to remember him. Uh, a colleague of, of, of mine and, and, and a member of Centerville, uh, Mr. Uh, L. Sidney Saunders, uh, a chartered accountant, would have also passed recently, and we certainly want to remember him. He was the deputy chairman of the government audit committee, uh, and so uh, we certainly will miss him there, uh, and we certainly uh, pray for his family. Lastly, I want to express condolences uh, publicly uh, to uh, one of my um, aides um, in Grand Bahama uh, on the passing of his mother, uh, the retired Sergeant Lorena Damianos, uh, who would have succumbed um, uh, just recently. Um, and, and for the public and, and those pe persons out there who have nothing better to do than to spread silly rumors. He did not give it to her. He hasn't been back to Nassau, so he couldn't give it to her. So please, let's not be unkind. This is a sensitive time. Um, but certainly we want to express our condolences to the family, uh, as well as to all those who would have lost loved ones, those who are currently struggling uh, with their challenge. Uh, and uh, again, encourage all of us be responsible because while we may survive it and we may do very well there are others who despite being healthy may not be so lucky so again with that mr speaker i thank you for this opportunity i thank all of my constituents who have prayed during the the month-long quarantine one that i exposed myself to through no fault of my own. One, the Prime Minister <laughs> office exposed me to. <laughs> I don't need any more vacation. I need <laughs> so hopefully we'll all be able to get through this with any, any more uh, 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 quarantines and lockdowns. Be safe, Baines. Be safe. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you Honorable Member. Uh, Honorable Member, are you tabling your communication? Order that the communication be brought up.
the, uh, the press conference will be at 1.30 today. So we can further update on the fiscal situation. Order that a communication do lie on the table. Um, the, the chair recognizes the honorable member for the Exomas on Ragged Island on a point of order. This is a quick question for the minister whilst he is laying his uh, communique on the table. I wonder whether he would be laying now or whether he'll be laying it later in the, in the agenda, the Fiscal uh, Responsibility Council's report, which is due to this House coincidentally by the end of July uh, each year. And it has not yet been laid. I wonder whether he would be kind to lay it now or later in the agenda. Also, a myriad of other reports as requested. I wonder whether he would lay them now or whether he would lay them later. Uh, these reports include a, the details of the, the new IMF loan. Chair recognized the honorable member for East Grand Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, it is unusual that we have question and answer period on, on, on a communication, but be that as it may. But be, that, be that as it may. Yeah, be that as it may. Um, in, <laughs> you know, Mr. Speaker, you, you try to be respectful, you know. Uh, sometimes it's tempt you. But, Mr. Speaker, the, the Fiscal Responsibility Council, uh, as I would have said before, the memorandum of understanding with respect to the Fiscal Council uh, had been delayed due to some uh, um, technical reasons, and I, I don't really want to get into the technical reasons with respect to that. Uh, however, uh, it was also delayed in the first year, we would have come to this house and said that we're going to have one year off uh, because of the nature of, of the crisis that we were, were facing. We have, uh, we've had the COVID-19, we've had the Hurricane Dorian uh, adjustments, we've come to this house. We've, we've come to this house and explained the adjustments and, and we've explained that the report would, the, the council report would be delayed. Those situations still exist. We have had the, come on, Mr. Mr. Central Landers. We have had the, uh, the memorandum of, of understanding with the council now settled. They are now beginning their work. We anticipate that they will come uh, to uh, present their report uh, as soon as they're able to do the necessary detailed technical work that they have to do. Uh, we will meet our November uh, fiscal responsibility um, um, plan in November as is mandated by the law. And by the way, we did that last year. We did meet that date. Uh, it's just that the council report, uh, which is uh, delayed, and we explained that to this house before. So there's no, no, no lack of transparency in respect to that. Uh, and so uh, the, with respect to the IMF loan document, uh, maybe the clerk will, will, will help us on the break, but I, I thought I actually laid that. Uh, if I didn't, I will certainly do so. Uh, there's no, there, and as I've said to the Bahamian people over and over again, and I don't know why this is so difficult to understand, that the, the IMF loan that we took, I'm going to lay the document if I have not done it, I will lay it. Uh, but as I've said to the Bahamian people before, this loan is a loan from the IMF, like I would take a loan from the IDB or from the World Bank or from anybody else. It has no special considerations or restrictions uh, or demands of any, anything from us in terms of structural adjustments as a IMF restructuring program may have. So, you know, it is unfortunate, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, if you don't like the answer to the question, you shouldn't ask it, right? The fact of the matter is that the, the, the opposition right now is being a little bit reckless. It's being a little bit re reckless, right? The, 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 country, the country is in a, in, a, in a fragile state, as we all know. And, and this is not, not helpful. Confusing the minds of the public on, on a point that is very straightforward. I don't know about South and Central Andres. I don't, I don't expect him to understand these issues in detail. But I do expect, but I do expect the, minister, the member uh, for, uh, for Exuma, honorable the, member. The, the, the shadow minister of finance, uh, to understand it. Uh, Further, the, honor, min, the shadow minister uh, of finance uh, honor, 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 has, honor, 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 on many occasions, had the opportunity the to be briefed. Before. The, speaker, point, point, the, uh, uh, on, the chair recognizes the honorable member for Mango Key. Mr. Speaker, South and Central Andrews on I do not order. take the condescending commentary by the member for East Grand Bahama very well, Mr. Speaker. I know this member very well. 
And I am not going to accept him seeing me in no negative light. He does not, have, he does know nothing about my capacity, and I have the same views about him. The same view reflecting on me and the deference he's paid to me. I pay the same deference to him because he has been known to be culpable, will not bring proper documents to this parliament. And in our view, we're saying to him, lay the documents today. Don't tell me what I could comprehend or not, but the speaker, I, I asked the member to rejoin. it. If not, it's going to be a different candidate for me and him going forward in this honorable place. That's all I'm asking, Mr. Speaker. I find his comments very condescending Honorable and personal disrespectful. and disrespectful. Grand Bahama. Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, with, with due respect, uh, I do apologize that the member took it as an insult. I didn't intend it to be an insult to you, sir. Uh, I'm saying that you're not a financial professional, as far as I know, and so I don't expect you to understand the intricacies. You may. I am not saying that you don't. I'm not saying that you don't. No, no, not at all. Uh, I, 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 it was not meant to be a, a, a slight, so I do apologize if you took it that way. But let me just say this, you can't threaten me either. That, that's not cool. You can't threaten me. Uh, again, Mr. Speaker, uh, if we have not laid the document, we will lay the document. It's not an issue. Thank, thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you for communication.